Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Commander John Benda, the 76th Commanding Officer of USS Constitution, the oldest and finest commissioned warship afloat in the world. Thank you very much for joining us today as we try something a little bit different. Welcome to commemorative reenactment of our battle with HMS Guerrier, which occurred on August 19, 1812. During the War of 1812, our second war for independence from Great Britain. A war to rightfully gain respect to the sovereign nation on the international stage, freedom of commerce on the sea, and the end to the unforgivable practice of impressment. <laughs> July 16th, off the New Jersey coast, where USS Constitution, under command of Captain Isaac Hull, narrowly evaded capture from a British fleet of five ships after a 57-hour desperate chase. This harrowing scene of events was aptly named the Great Escape. The escape from this grave predicament was an exploit of seamanship, which is among the treasured memories of her service. It was the beginning of the legend of the ship we call Old Ironsides, whose name, of course, is still the most illustrious in the American naval arsenal and recognized across the globe. It, it is a privilege to behold today in the Charlestown Navy Yard this gallant frigate, preserved as a symbol of our heritage, her tall masts and graceful yards still sweeping the clouds above and serving as an inspiration for those current active service members serving abroad today. After returning to home port despondent with his officers and crew, Captain Isaac Cole sailed again a few days later, seeking redemption on a solitary cruise to the eastward with the intention of vexing the enemy's merchant trade and hopeful of finding a British frigate willing to engage him in a duel. Captain Hull boldly charted a northern course against British shipping in the Halifax Gulf of St. Lawrence area. which had been signed by the able seaman and for which Hull was so eagerly seeking was the Guerriere, a 38-gun ship commanded by Captain James Dakers. HMS Guerriere just happened to be among the five ships that had given us chase just one month earlier. However, during that engagement, the ill-fated Guerriere failed to grasp the fact that Constitution and the other American frigates of her class were the most formidable craft afloat and that they would revolutionize the design of war vessels for half a century thereafter. The two ships make their approach. <laughs> the bosun bites the call. All hands clear ship for action, and the drums beat to battle stations. Meanwhile, 
Isaac Cole reduced sales to fighting canvas in order to minimize damage to the sales and rigging. The action was opened by HMS Carrier. Broadside after broadside, the HMS Carrier drew nearer and nearer the Constitution. Yet Captain Isaac Cole would not return broadside fire. Isaac Cole paces the quarterdeck, trying to keep his composure, but the excitement builds within him. Sir, we must return fire. Not yet. Isaac Cole waited and coolly bided his time, allowing the ships to get closer together. His first lieutenant came running again and again, begging him to begin firing. However, Constitution withstood the first waves of battery by the enemy due to her stout and thick white and live oak planking, as strong as iron. So stout were her sides that shot rebounded from them more than once and thus giving rise to her affectionate nickname. Lieutenant William S. Bush is mortally wounded during his attempt to board Guerriere, becoming the first Marine officer to die during a seagoing battle. <whistles> USS Constitution begins to drift away from the shattered hull of Guerriere, dragging down the forward mass of the enemy ship, reducing her to a floating, tattered hulk. HMS Guerriere then fires a single shot in the leeward direction from the battle scene, singling surrender and allowing old Ironsides to take on board prisoners and sink the damaged enemy. A determined crew, combined with good fortune, won Constitution its first victory of the War of 1812. Huzzah! All told, USS Constitution would lose seven men and seven more wounded in action. The British would lose 15 men and 78 wounded. Over the next several years, Constitution would have two other major naval victories over the British against HMS Java, under command of Captain William Bainbridge, and a two-on-one battle against HMS Siam and HMS Levant, while under command of Captain Charles Stewart. Constitution's victories while of course worthy of being well remembered, we're only a part of this country's ultimate victory to solidify our independence. 
There were 12 United States Navy frigates in action over that three year period, including the other original six commission frigates, USS Constellation, USS President, USS Congress, USS Chesapeake, and the USS United States, and also including the USS Niagara, USS Lawrence, and USS Essex, my old ship, now known as the Iron Bear. The lesson, no ship can go it alone. The current mission of this command and the active duty crew of 80 sailors is to preserve, protect, and promote not just the legacy of old Ironsides, but all of our armed service, and particularly the United States Navy, the ships and squadrons and special units deployed across the world right now. We physically embody the Navy Corps values of courage, honor, and commitment. Our 223 years in service represents perseverance and our 33 naval engagements with zero defeats represent the maritime excellence and superiority on the high seas which we still have today. In closing, the crew and I want to recognize the men and women serving on board ships and squadrons at sea in 2020, who also continue to honor the legacy and spirit of those fallen in the Battle of Guerriere. And with this following 21 gun volley, we salute you. I am Command Senior Chief Lance Valdespo, and I dedicate this round to USS Winston S. Churchill, DDG 81, out of Norfolk, Virginia. Most mate, second class, Jason Pye, and I dedicate this round to USS Theodore Roosevelt, CBN 71, the big stick. I dedicate this round to all sailors who have made the ultimate 